Welcome to the Pope on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is uh, Reverend Steve. I am the founder of the Church Where of Edward. So? Oh, and uh, Maxwell is here to tell us that he's doing a rock show. Yeah. Maxwell, you're doing the rock show? Yeah. Yeah? Tell the podcast about the rock show. I'm going to play, but I need to do it. But I'm going to play, but... Oh, playing. playing the rock show? Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, let us know how the rock show goes, Maxwell. We got a, a, a PS3. Yeah. And about 12 games. And we, we just got a full set for um, Guitar Hero and Rock Band. And uh-huh. so they're, they're all playing that right now. It's the first time that... We've been together for a while as a family, so everybody's going nuts right now playing Guitar Hero and <laughs> Rock Band, and Maxwell wants to play, but Maxwell's three, so he's not, but he's excited, as, as everyone is, about, hi, Maxwell, what are you, what are you, oh, you're taking over the podcast, yes, mm. what, what did you, what are you saying? Talk right here to the to the podcast, okay? What do you want to say to the podcast? There was a crocodile I saw it in a movie. You on saw a crocodile. You saw a crocodile on TV? On my TV. On your TV. Oh. Well, thank you. Wow, you you have a rock show and uh, you saw a crocodile. You're having a busy day. Um so anyway, I I I might not be on the top of my game for this podcast. I'm going to try and rally. Okay. It's just, it's just I just got home from uh, a very, very exciting time uh, celebrating my 10-year wedding anniversary with my wife. Congratulations. Thank you. I have no idea how she's still with me, but whatever. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, a, it's a Woodian miracle. There we go. Yeah. But but we we went to a uh, we stayed at a really nice Hilton hotel and they had a free breakfast and free dinner. Nice. And so we said, "Oh, well, we were going to go out to some nice place, but this is free and it seems to be really really good, so let's just go and have a free dinner and it was really nice and they had really good food and free all you can drink." alcoholic beverages yeah and so we said well it'll make more sense you know to kind of save money if we just uh drink like crazy 
for free here uh-huh. yeah. before we go to the concert. And yeah, that's a pretty solid idea, but you shouldn't be hopping from alcohol to alcohol. Essentially, it was just the, the golden corral of alcoholic beverages. Yeah, uh, nice. <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was very nice. Um, I'm just now, I'm just now getting over my hangover. Okay. And that was last night at like six o'clock. So now it's today at six o'clock, and I'm almost feeling like I'm not dead. <laughs> so that's good. I saw Primus in concert, and it's weird because I saw Primus about 11 years ago in San Francisco and it was a, it was a sold out show and there were so many people and they played in this big huge massive theater but we're in the middle of nowhere Oklahoma and and the place was not full and they didn't do the longest set in the world but they did play Primus and the Chocolate Factory in its entirety and that made me happy because I had mentioned that album a long time ago in one of the oh, first yeah. episodes of our podcast. And so it, it it was really amazing to be able to to go and see that. I don't remember too much after that concert because then we decided to also drink while we were at the concert. It was fun. It was a fun would, time. Was, I, I would think that there would be a bigger draw. Yeah, yeah. I imagine if um, the Newsboys from God's Not Dead did a concert here <laughs> in Oklahoma, then yeah, that would be pretty packed. But Primus, you know, it that type of music needs a certain type of person to really appreciate it. And I don't think that that type of person is too readily available in Oklahoma. I also got to go and um and see the new Avengers movie. Oh you did, okay. I haven't gotten yeah. to see it yet, but I don't care about spoilers, so but our listeners it, might. <laughs> no, no, no. It it was really, really good and yeah. it, I went to go see it at a Harkins theater that had a Cine Capri inside of it and it really meant a lot to me in Phoenix. There was this theater that that's, that was open for a really long time. I think it was built in the sixties or the seventies or the fifties for all I know, but it was there for a really long time. And it was modeled after the old school movie palaces. Uh, so it was yeah. really nice. And this huge, massive screen and it was called the Cine Capri and it was n near downtown Phoenix, Arizona for years and I grew up loving that theater. I saw all of the Star Wars is there, the first three Hi. Star Wars is and uh -huh. all of the really good um, Disney movies like uh, Lion King and Beauty and the Beast and Little yeah, Mermaid. And that whole spurt, yeah. Yeah. And God, I saw it. Titanic was the last movie they played at the Cine Capri before they closed it down. So that gives you kind of a, a an estimate as to when they stopped the Cine Capri. But the Dan Harkins, he's a theater owner from Arizona, and he has a theater chain which is slowly but surely spreading all over the place. But in memory of the Cine Capri, he made – um, Cine Capri replica theaters inside of his bigger theaters. So in Tempe and in Scottsdale and in, I don't know, Texas and some other place, they have mini Cine Capri theaters. So it meant a lot to me that I saw so many movies at the original Cine Capri. And then uh, here in Oklahoma City, they happened to have a Harkins with a Cine Capri, so it meant a lot to me that I was able to do that and kind of relive my childhood like that. Yes, Maxwell, what do you need, absolutely need to say to my podcast? Here, say say it over here. What do you need to say? Yes, what do you need to say? Uh, no, no more.
Nino Crocodile. You were silly. You just called my podcast silly? Yeah. Oh, why is my podcast silly? Because he is. My podcast is a he? Funny. Oh, okay. My podcast is funny. Good to know. Thank you, Maxwell. <laughs> my podcast is funny. That's 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 a good review. That is a good review. It's a very good review of the podcast. Funny funny is good, we'll take it. Yeah. Since that is the only feedback that we're getting. <laughs> <laughs> and from the way I figure it, we have about like 300 regular listeners. Yay. You know, it's that's kind good. of a it's a kind of an estimate, you know, cuz the stats on feed burners suck. I think yeah. that's pretty close. Well, what what episode is this? Is this episode 28? This would be 28, yeah. Wow. Good for us. Yeah, so we're not even through our first year, so 300, 200, those are good numbers. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. pretty good. That's pretty good. This week's movie is Casino Royale, a fast-paced thriller starring Daniel Craig. Yes. What an amazing movie. He looked a lot older in this movie. Yes, yes. He looked a lot older. And then, <laughs> uh, of course, Daniel Craig's American nephew. Yes. Played by Woody Allen. <laughs> Finally, the Woody Allen-Daniel Craig movie. Uh, uh, psych! No, this is the shitty Casino Royale we'll be talking about this week. The one I was talking about is the two thousand and the two thousand six reboot that apparently everyone loves and that I haven't bothered with. I I know I should because I've heard great things about those new James Bond movies. I just haven't seen any of them. They they don't stick in my head. Like really? I've seen two of them, I think. And I have no recollection of them, really. Huh. Yeah. No, I, I, I haven't seen a single one. Is it weird that I kind of want to start watching all of them because the next one is going to have Batista in it? That is weird. It is. That is weird? Okay. <laughs> I just I really like Guardians of the Galaxy, so I just want to support him. In what he's doing next. So Same you thing. do you think in the new James Bond movie he's going to be uh, talking very slow and woodenly and uh, not understand metaphor? No, I just think he's going to be just the the muscle, just the the heavy. He's there's there's always like the the bad guy who's really smart and talks a lot, and then like his one henchman who doesn't say a goddamn thing, I, ima I imagine that's Batista. Ah, uh, okay. I wonder if Kevin Nash is pissed, because that was always his part. Freaking Kevin Nash. <laughs> Although, Kevin Nash really did shine as Stacy Jack's bodyguard. He did, but everybody shined in that movie. Yes, everybody shined the, in Rock of Ages. The great, the great Rock of Ages. Yes, we were uh, this morning. We dragged ourselves out of bed, and we were just. I so... need to tell you something. Yes, of course you need to tell us something. What do you need to say, Maxwell? <gasps> what do you need to say? Um, there was. I saw something. A, a guy. I saw, you saw a, a guy? scary dragon. You saw a scary dragon? Yeah. Did you sue it? You should have sued it. You could have gotten money. Money? Yeah. So next time you see a dragon, just sue it, okay? Take it to court. Oh all right? Okay. You take that. I need another one. I, okay. You can have that one, too. Every, so every, so most, you, were, you were not bothered by the horrible, racist, sexist that is Joss Whedon in your enjoyment of Age of Ultron? Uh no, no, no. <laughs> it was a good. It was a good movie. It, it it seemed Age of Ultron seemed a bit heavy, in the sense that 
they really had to put so much into this movie. Yeah. Okay, let's explain what the Falcon was doing because of the last Captain America movie. Let's explain uh, where Jane is. Let's have Thor go off and do his own thing to set up his movie. And now let's have Iron Man uh, do this and then do that. And then it's, so this sets up Iron Man and let's set up Captain America. And now let's set up uh, War Machine. Now let's set up this. Now let's set up the next Avengers movie. Let's also set up the next Captain America movie. Let's set up this. Let's set up... It, it, it seemed like they just they were obliged to do a lot mm -hmm. with this movie. Yeah. It, so it, it seemed yeah. a bit, seemed a bit heavy, seemed a bit big. It was a fat film, a fat not film. fat like the H A T. It was just, there was a lot to it. Bloated. Yes, it was, it was a, it was a bloated film, but it was still a wonderful movie. It was absolutely wonderful. And, Hawkeye had a much bigger and funnier and relatable role, and I really liked that. It really, really good movie. I liked it, but I, I, I worry, I worried a bit that it, it meant so much to me to, to go to the Seneca Pre, that I could have watched anything at that theater, and I would have had a wonderful time. Like yeah. I could have watched Paul Blart Mall Cop Two, and it's, <laughs> I still would have been like, oh my god, that was amazing. I feel the same way sometimes about uh, drive-in movie theaters. Yeah, like I'm not sure, I'm not sure if I can hate a film at a drive-in. No, you can't play with this. Okay, I don't want you to break it. This is emeralds. So the homework this week, uh huh, is uh, go go para presidente, and I love this video. I actually. Uh, posted the video on YouTube. If I'm not mistaken, I was the first person to post this video on YouTube. It was the first video I ever put on YouTube. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna go go para presidente. I posted this on my YouTube page eight years ago. <laughs> okay. So, pretty old. I, I, I made a blog post about Gogo -Go para Presidente, and so I was, I got some emails from the people who created the video, mm -hmm. and he said, hey, uh, thanks for, for supporting that video, uh, do you want us to send it to you? And and I said, yeah, sure. I mean, I've had this song stuck in my head for about a, a decade now. And so they sent me the video and I posted it on YouTube. And it's had over 24,000 hits. Nice. In eight years, which I think is uh, pretty darn good. It's an amazing, weird, bizarre, peculiar video and there's a lot to it it i think it has a pretty interesting story there was a time this is hard to understand now but there was a definite time when the usa network and t the tnt network were absolutely awesome and cool yes yes it's this is true usa had night flights mm -hmm. which was Love awesome night flight yeah Love Night Flights uh, from 1981 to 1988, and then it ran in syndication from 1990 to 1996. Like every, like it, it played on USA Network, and then after that, you would occasionally see it at like 1 a.m. somewhere on like your local NBC station or something like that. And it was just a really weird collection of music videos and bad movies and short films and cartoons and stand-up comedy and it was just really really amazing it was just a cool little show like a bizarre one they show it late at night and they'd show like punk and new wave bands and they they had a some church of the sub genius videos they would show yes i remember that yes yeah, and they would occasionally show things like uh, like bits from Kentucky Fried Movie and 
like weird animated films. It, it, it was a really awesome, cool show. It was a cool show. And there was another show that I was in love with. Okay, hold that thought. We have to take a yes. quick break. Oh, we do. Oh, yay. We should take a break. When we come back, we'll talk more about Go Go Para Presidente and the USA and TNT Network. We'll be right back after this, loyal listeners. Do you like comic books? Um. Me too! Do you listen to podcasts? Are you still talking to me? Cool! I have one called The Comic Book Update. So? I do weekly reviews of story arcs, comic miniseries, ongoing titles, and more! I don't care. I know, right? So all you have to do is go to the website at comicbookupdate.com. Why would I do that? We post daily previews of new comic books every day. Ugh, someone save me. And every weekend is Cosplay Sunday, with blog posts featuring cosplayers from around the world. Excuse me, miss, is this guy bothering you? Back off, buddy. She's with me. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, sorry. Nerd rage. Oh, yeah. So check out the comic book update at comicbookupdate.com, as well as on iTunes, and stream it live on Stitcher. The comic book update, the antidote for nerd rage. And we Read the podcast. Uh, welcome back, everyone. My, um... I was just talking a, earlier about how we, we went to the Primus concert and got raging drunk and yada, yada, yada. All of that was happening in Oklahoma City, and it's like, a, like an hour, hour and a half drive away. Uh, the closest thing to a big city that there is here, that in Tulsa. Anywho, um, looks like uh, it, we came home a couple of hours ago, and apparently we came home at the right time because Oklahoma City just got hit by a tornado, looks like. Oh, boy. I don't know if the tornado actually touched Did down. Do? I, I don't know. I don't... Uh, yeah. It, it, a lot of people on my Facebook feed are in shelters right now, and there's some property damage. We've 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 had some close calls, my family and I, but so far we haven't really been hit by any sort of major tornado event or anything like that. There was a tornado that came a couple of miles close to us once, but yeah. We've 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 been pretty safe. The only difficult part about living in Oklahoma is that Apparently, a tornado will hit somewhere in Oklahoma, usually very, very, very far away from us. But apparently, the news throughout the rest of America says, tornadoes hitting Oklahoma. And so everyone who I know who doesn't live in Oklahoma is suddenly texting me every five seconds going, oh, my God, are you OK? Oh, my God. I heard about the tornadoes. Are you, are you guys all right? Like, I know that Oklahoma is not the biggest state in the world, but there are, you know, it isn't like one little two mile strip. Right. You know, there are other parts to Oklahoma. But apparently we got out of Oklahoma at the right time. So that's good. Hopefully no one is dead. Have, have you checked on Primus? Are they OK? Uh, I believe they're in Texas. Hopefully they are okay. Okay, that's good. I think there was a tornado in Texas, too. Honey, where is Primus now? Like, what's their next stop? Do you know? It's just, it was on the shirt that we bought, so I thought you might know. She's checking right now to find out where Primus is. Um, so... What was I talking about? I was talking about how cool the USA Network and the TNT Network used to be. USA had night flights, but they also had this other show that I was obsessed with. It, it, Kansas. They're in Kansas? They're in Kansas. Primus is in Kansas. Aha. Uh-huh. That's where Primus is. So they should be safe. Hopefully they are safe. 
Good. There was a show, and it played on the USA Network in 1994, and it lasted for like two years, but that's about it. But it was a show that was produced by the people who run Something Weird Video. I'm not familiar with that either. Wow. Something Weird Video? Oh, Something Weird Video is wonderful. Oh, it's great. They just, they're the, when I was in high school slash college, I learned about them and they, they would, they were creating almost by hand. They were creating copies of really bad and bizarre movies that they would find and they would, they would sell them. You would send $20 and they'd send you a copy of all of these weird and hard to find grindhouse and exploitation and nudie films. And I'm happy, I'm happy to see that they're still around and they're still doing these videos. And they have a website now. I think it's something weird video dot com. But they you know, now you can download them directly from their website, but it's it it's really amazing. And so it the show was produced by something weird video and it was hosted by Sandra Bernhardt. Yeah. And it was called Real Wild Cinema. And it would show on like Saturday night at like midnight or 1 a.m. And it was an hour long TV show where Sandra Bernhardt would just show scenes from weird, bizarre grindhouse movies and exploitation movies. And, you know, Russ Meyer and Roger Corman and and stuff like that. And she would have themes. So, okay, so this episode, it's going to be lunatics on the loose or this one's going to be, you know, nudie cutie night on real wild cinema and they don't would like blur everything out or put stars on them or black farm or something yeah. but it was really awesome they would show scenes from like nude on the moon or <laughs> like those really bad star man movies yes uh-huh and i just became obsessed with the show and i loved the show i would stay up and watch it and i would record it on video <laughs> and I just recently learned that there are a few full episodes or at least one or two full episodes of the show that are still on that are on YouTube. Uh-huh. OK. So if you search Real Wild Cinema, it's R-E-E-L. Real Wild Cinema. It's, it's a really awesome show and it, it helped me along my path, you know. Really helped me along my path to bad movies, so and then like a gateway show. Yeah, yeah, very much so. It was like a, it was like a, like a forty-five minute long. It came from Hollywood that they would show late at night on Saturdays, and I absolutely loved that. <laughs> and then on TNT they had Monster Vision, which was hosted by Joe Bob Briggs for a while. Yes, and then. TNT Monster Vision would also have like Godzilla marathons, and I loved that. Absolutely loved that, and I would stay up late and watch like whatever Godzilla movie they were going to show. And they also had this show. It was like a block of cartoons, like an hour long block of cartoons that they would show on TNT in the 90s. And it was called the Rudy and Gogo World Famous Cartoon Show. And they would show like Looney Tunes and Tom and Jerry and like weird Popeye the Sailor ones. But there were two puppets, mm -hmm. uh, one named Rudy and one named Jesse. And they they were uh, marionettes and they would host the show. And it was really bizarre. It really did feel like a like a Adult Swim sort of a thing. But before Adult Swim came along. Yeah. And so they would they would float around and they would they would have adventures and stuff like that. And every once in a while, they would appear in movies that were owned by TNT or TV shows that would that were owned by TNT. So in one clip, you'd see them, I don't know, in like a, a scene from Dallas or something like that or like Rudy and and. Jesse are in on an episode of the love boat. Really, really bizarre. <laughs> and they had a, a black and white goat named Gogo, -Go, which was their pet goat. And they would use an a actual 
videos of a goat. It was really weird. But one night uh, they had a special where a, a New Year's Eve special where they showed a bunch of bad movies just all night. They showed The Blob and Queen from Outer Space yeah. and House on Haunted Hill and all of these really bad movies. And it, it was the, the Rudy and Go-Go fun time, a New Year's Eve flaming cheese ball special is what it was called. <laughs> okay. And I recorded as much as I could of it. And there was one part that I loved where he, he – Rudy is – and uh, the – other one they announced to the kids from the movie the blob that go go the goat is running for president uh, uh -huh. okay. in the 1996 u.s presidential election that go go would be running for president and so they made a a video for go go para presidente that was their campaign slogan and it was a running gag throughout the show that Gogo -Go was running for president. Uh -huh. And the, the jingle was that video that they showed that night when they first announced it. It became a really popular segment. They kept playing it over and over again. And I, I had seen it once and I had it on video and I just became obsessed with it. Just absolutely obsessed with Gogo -Go para presidente. Just absolutely 100% obsessed with it. So I, I, I wrote a, a piece in my blog and they sent me the video and I put it up on YouTube and I thought, oh, well, this will be my first video on YouTube. I'll, I'll make a YouTube. Originally, I set up a YouTube account solely so that I could put GoGo -Go on the Internet because there weren't any other real proof of gogo's existence not a lot of people remember the rudy and gogo -Go world famous cartoon show or the fact that they had a uh, that they had a, a new year's eve special that's sort of a forgotten thing and i didn't think a lot of people cared about so i I'm, i was surprised and still am surprised of the comments that i get from people who are like oh my god i remember this song i heard it you know, it, 20 years ago, mm -hmm. I, I heard it like 16 years ago and I, I couldn't get it out of my head. Thank you so much for putting this video out there on YouTube. Cool. And it's just, it's just amazing. It's just really, really wonderful. I absolutely love that video. There's something really weird and bizarre about it, and it's just it's just great, you know? It is. It's very strange. Yeah. Yeah. It's really... Oh, God. Okay. So, tornado warning now for here. Oh, great. I, uh -huh. We're in the middle of a tornado warning. That sound coming to you through the electric mist. It's the Midnight Cinephile with new episodes every Wednesday night. Do you have a seller or what happens in this event? Um, we scream and freak out. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, but primarily looting. Yeah? Yeah, just you, looting and pillaging. You start that before the tornado? Oh, yeah, before, after, like, like the whole time. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, an actual just event. Yeah, yeah, we, we make it a, a big, huge thing. Okay, so locations impacted include places. Uh, hold on a second. Honey, is that a tornado siren? Can you turn off the...
Uh, hi. Hi. Uh, so there are tornado sirens. No, I'm not done with the podcast, but, uh, definitely looks like the tornado sirens are hitting. And yes, Bella, I know it's an alert, okay? No, I'm saying. I think we might need to head to the shelter that's a couple of blocks down. No, I don't. I don't think I can. Uh, we can't take Wi-Fi with us. <laughs> but I might have to cut this short I'm, and okay, head to a shelter. Understandable. Okay, this is exciting. I need to put on a shirt if I'm going to survive this tornado. Um, okay, so uh, I will talk to you some other time. Okay, we'll make arrangements. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Well. Are you eating? I'm gonna are go. You still on the podcast? Yes, I'm. I, we were recording the podcast, but hey, these God. are the tornado sirens, so we gotta go. Okay, be, be I will safe, talk to man. you. Okay. All right. Bye. What a talkless Pope on film. Like our Facebook page by searching Pope on film. Pope on film. You can follow us on Twitter at Pope on film. Or email us at pope at undeadcow.com. <laughs> Not sure how to listen? Well, just find us in the iTunes store by searching Undead Cow. <laughs> it's all one word. And you know, if, if you're really hard, hard up, you can always find us on Stitcher. And of course, YouTube at youtube.com slash users slash undeadcow.com. I gotta go home and try to talk my girlfriend into an abortion. Very much shame now. Never cried. I'm gonna let go of my high school days. I am.